And welcome to tonight's Facebook Live event. Tonight we will be learning about supported decision making, what it is, who qualifies, and when can you begin the process. I am Carmina Serioli, the co-executive director for PATH, and I would like to introduce you to our guests tonight. We have Ruth Nuss, who is our board president, and we have her daughter, Samantha, who is also the chair of CT Casa. So of course we have Marnie McNiff. You should all know Marnie. Um, she's our amazing Facebook Live support staff. Marnie will be keeping an eye on the comment section. So feel free to share any comments you have. If you have any questions, she'll be more than happy to, to um, let us know what they are and we'll try to answer them for you. Um, and we'll do that as we go on. So feel free to just chime in Marnie and just ask us the question. So some of you may be wondering what exactly is supported decision making. So supported decision making is an alternative to guardianship for individuals with an intellectual and developmental disability. Supported decision making allows an individual with a disability to make his or her own decision about life choices with the support of a designated person or team of trusted supporters. Supported decision making is grounded in the belief that all people, regardless of their disability, have the right to exercise choice in all aspects of their lives. Supported decision making can also be helpful to people with dementia and mental health diagnosis. So this is going to be more of a question and answer kind of thing. So it's open. So, you know, Ruth and Sammy, feel free to, you know, add whatever you would like to add. Um, but thank you. This is really good because this is like a really hot topic and we really want a lot of people to know exactly what is supported decision making because it really is new. Mm -hmm. um, even though we've heard about it for the past few years and you guys can, I'm sure, really talk about that more. But first question is, how did you first learn about supported decision making? My mom and I first learned about the supported decision making agreement at the Building a Great Life conference in October 2014 that PATH and CASA went to. Right, so I attended a breakout session called Alternatives to Guardianship. Um, our high school transition coordinator had been um, encouraging us to get guardianship for Samantha. And we knew other people that had guardianship agreements, um, but their situations were different from ours. And we were curious to know what other options Sammy might have. So that was definitely because I remember you even talking about it after you left it. You were like, I was so thrilled. excited. Yeah, you, <laughs> were like, you were. Yeah, I was so all the way home in the car. I was telling Sammy, oh, I, I, I learned about this and I'm, I'm so excited. And this is this makes so much more sense for you. Mm -hmm. Right. <laughs> Yeah, it's pretty good. I didn't realize it, it was that long ago already. Wow. Right? So it's really so yeah. So not only has it been a couple of years, it's really been around for you're talking seven years now. Right. So right. So why did you decide to create a supported decision making um, agreement? We decided to do a supported decision making agreement so that I can be as dependent as I can be and I can make my own decisions, but I could also ask for help if I needed help. Mm -hmm. Right, instead of having somebody make your decision yes. for you, right? 
So we had actually started the process of guardianship. We downloaded all the forms and we were looking at them. And, you know, Roy and I, my husband and I had, had you know, looked into it, but it just didn't feel right for Sammy. We wanted her to have as much independence as possible and as much autonomy and to make her own decisions. She's capable of making her own decisions. And we felt that guardianship was just too restrictive for her level of capability. Yes, she had disabilities and yes, she needed guidance, but who amongst us doesn't, right? <laughs> we all could do with having people to give us guidance and advice. Um, so when I heard about this pilot that they were running in Massachusetts, I was just so excited. It was, you know, basically, as Carmina mentioned, a person can have an individual supporter or a team of supporters um, to help make decisions. And I love the fact that at the end of the day, the decision was still Samantha's. This was not somebody else making a decision for her, telling her what to do. She could just, you know, maybe she could have, it was a financial question and she would maybe have three supporters and she'd take their advice and their input and then she would still decide what to do. So that was what one of the things I really loved about supported decision making and nobody could force her into doing um, what she, what they wanted her to do. So at the end of the session at the conference, I went up to the lawyer and I said, hey, can we do this in Connecticut? And she said, well, there is no supported decision making agreement in Connecticut right now. But sure, you can take the form, you can, you know, fill it in. And as long as it's, you know, witnessed or notarized, it's a legal document and, and you know, it works. So that's what we did. She, she emailed me the Massachusetts one and I took the form and made the adjustments to the Connecticut phone numbers and, and, and references and, um, and we went from there. Wow. So yes, and I yeah, definitely is a great alternative because um, Sammy is, yeah, definitely. I, I can't imagine any other way for her, really, right. you know? And, and the um, more decisions she's been able to make, quite honestly, the more confidence she has and the mm -hmm. more decisions she wants to make. So it's been a really great growing process for Sammy too. Cool. So were you nervous about creating an agreement, knowing that many people in Connecticut are unfamiliar with the supported decision-making process or agreement? No, I was not worried about having a supported decision-making agreement. I was actually worried about, before, I was actually worried before I had one about what would happen after high school. And Sammy really hadn't, ex, she hadn't expressed that. When we were talking on the way home after that conference, and I was saying this, you know, the, 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 you could we could do all this, and she's like, you know, I was really nervous about what was going to happen after high school, because like suddenly I'm 18, and what happens? I have to make all my own decisions. I have to do everything by myself. You can't come to the doctor with me. And she was, she was obviously had been had been things that had been going on in her head for quite a while and she just you know she hadn't mentioned it so no I mean we're, we were both really excited to um to to start working on this and I mean so much so that Sammy's like I want to write some legislation I want to make it an, an option I you know I want to make sure that other people know that this is a thing so we had reached out to uh, Gretchen Knopf, um, who was running the Supported Decision Making Coalition and said, can we help? And she was thrilled to have Sammy help. And actually, Samantha was the first person in Connecticut that she knew of that actually had a Supported Decision Making Agreement. So bless you. <laughs> bless you. <laughs> so yeah, we've been working with the coalition now for about a year, a bit, a bit longer than a year, maybe. Right before COVID, right, before COVID. yeah. So we did have some yeah. in-person meetings. So yeah, yeah we're, we're pretty excited about helping other families get to know about what the options are. So are you, Sammy, the only young adult that's on the task force or the coalition uh, with supported decision-making? You are really. I think, the, yeah. The, yeah. There yeah. are some older adults who had had a guardianship 
and it hadn't been um, appropriate for them and they were able to go to court and um, have the guardianship removed. And, and now they're an independent. So, so they they have that perspective where they've mm -hmm. lived that. Um, so there's a lot of different people on the coalition. There's, um, in fact, the, the, um, there's a guide that um, the coalition put together and there's people from Disability Rights Connecticut, ARC of Connecticut, there's lawyers, there's um, transition specialists, so there's a, a really, there's a very wide range of people, people that, um, you know, work with people with traumatic brain injury. So this is not even just something for young people. This is something for anybody that, um, you know, needs help making decisions that maybe aren't appropriate for a guardianship or a conservatorship. Yeah, so it's like the lifespan. It really covers the mm -hmm. whole lifespan. It yeah. absolutely does. Yeah. Yeah. So how did you choose the areas where you wanted the support, um, Sammy? Um, so on the forum, there are different areas that, that I can use to support decision-making agreement for. So I went through all the areas and I chose what I wanted. So, so there, there's a lot of different areas, right? Yeah. So there's medical, there's financial, educational, um so and there are there some that were not relevant to samantha's situation right, right? so yes. she went through and decided which one she wanted to um focus on and then she just kind of looked around her life and said okay who would be a good person to help me with this and right. we have a close family friend who has a financial background so she put him down for finances she put me and a close family female friend down for medical. So, you know, she 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 really looked at who would I talk to if if I had a concern, who would be the person I would talk to in my life about that. And and that was kind of how you, yeah. you know. So and, you, and you can change the categories too, as as you go. I mean, this is this is not written in stone. If if you have a new situation where something else comes up that now, you know, it's, it's maybe she hadn't been in, in education at the beginning, but now she is. So she could, that's something you can add of, you know, you, you can change this document whenever you want to. Yes. So you're able to have more than just one. So you can have a, oh, yeah. a, one person for each category, pretty much. Right. Or multiple wow. people for each category. For each category. For wow. She, right. So she has a, a backup, a backup to everybody. Yeah. So yeah. <laughs> yeah. So you're very well covered. That's it. Yeah. <laughs> um, so how did you choose your supporters? I mean, I guess you, you kind of just covered that. Um, yeah. 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 So it was, Ruth. So, yeah. <laughs> it, but it really was Stick people that, script. you know, yeah. she, she already yeah. trusted. And I think that's something important that it needs to be somebody you trust because supported decision making is, again, it's voluntary. This is, these are people that you're going to look to for advice and guidance, not somebody that's going to push you to do what they suggest, because what right. they suggest might not be exactly what's right for you. Right. So I think it's really important that, it, that there's a lot of factors when you pick a supporter. You, you really, it really has to be somebody you know well, you trust, and right. you know that is going to do what's best for you, who's going to give the best advice for you. Yes. So I'm guessing that when you do, have somebody in mind you obviously approach them and you talk to them and you kind of is there stuff that they need to fill out and sign themselves or um i think at the beginning they signed something right so there's yeah, a space the on the agreement right yeah and actually in in the guidebook there is um an example supported decision making agreement so it explains what supported decision making is. And then you go through, I choose the name of the supporter and then you put their contact information in and then they they sign it in front of a witness to say that, yeah, okay. I'm going to, you know, I'm going to support this person in um, in these topics. And, and, you know, there's nothing to say she can't ask somebody else as well, but these are people that she knows. She's already had the conversation with. She knows that, they're ready and you know standing by yeah. to give her the advice that she she's looking for that's great 
So can you give us an example of when you use your supported decision-making agreement? I've used at the doctor's office and college so far. And the college one was kind of, that was, that was kind of fun, right? Because <laughs> <laughs> um, you're 18, you're an adult, yeah. they don't have to talk to you, they don't want to talk to you. There's also something called a FOPA form, oh, yeah. which is kind of like the HIPAA of education, which gives people permission or gives the school permission to speak to somebody else on your behalf. And, and I, I'll be honest with you, they don't tell you that. No. They don't volunteer that information. So it's really important to know that when you're in college, you do have the option of, of filling out a FERPA form that says that the, the, um, the school staff can speak to whoever you designate. But, um, but so that's on file now as well as the supported decision-making agreement too, right? Um, the FERPA form. I think I need to renew it. Actually. Oh, you need to renew it? Oops. <laughs> <laughs> Just reminded you to do that. Good thing I don't need to talk to them right now. <laughs> so then they also have a copy of your educational agreement then. Um, they have that in your file, right? So you have to yeah. give it to them also. Okay, and right. you'd have to give it to your doctor, right? Oh yeah, okay. yeah. And and of, of course for for medical, you have to fill, when she fills out her HIPAA form, she has to put me on there as well. That doesn't right. exclude you know. You still have to do all of the other right. legal forms as well. Okay, so you just said they at the college they didn't want to up you know, give you the information and all that right. other stuff because you didn't fill out the FERPA. They didn't easily just give you that information. Oh, so right. did you have any difficulties getting the agreement recognized by that school or by a doctor or any anywhere once you provided it for them? No, mm -hmm. no, no. No, in fact, our one of our doctors just suggest because we were talking about Victoria and her MRIs, and they said, "Oh, well, maybe you need to have one of those for for your other daughter too." So, you know, maybe we're starting to get you know a little bit of knowledge out there as well. You guys were like early on. I mean, it, like I said, it's I mean, it's been around. We saw the conference in 2014, but it's really right. just picking up momentum the past few years. So I right. mean, th those institutions that you are approaching, I mean, are, are they aware of supported decision making? Yeah. Have you had to educate them on top of it then? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. But yeah. it's almost like they're relieved when they see something like that, because it's like that gives them permission. You know, it's, they need something that's written that says, yes, it's OK, because I think for the most part, I mean, we have great doctors and we have yeah. great, great teachers I think they want to do the right thing they want to help you so when you present them with a form like that that just gives them permission with your signature and everybody else it's like okay great yep moving moving on so yeah so it's kind of a relief I guess for them too you know yeah I think so yeah. yeah so have you completed any other forms or documents to ensure your supporters have access to information when supporting a decision like medical release forms or any other forms from the bank. HIPAA and FERPA, right? Oh, those, yeah. That, those would count. Yes. Yeah. But we are working on getting um, power of attorney and healthcare directives for the whole family, actually, because we learned not too long ago on oh, another yeah. past webinar <laughs> that um, everybody should have one of those, whether or not you have a disability. So, yeah, that's something we're working on. Yeah, that was a shocker too when I heard that. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, should bring her back to do another. Yeah, absolutely. Event, I think because that was a really good one. Yeah. Um, so, how does it feel to have a supported decision making agreement, knowing what other options are out there? Um, I'm excited that I can make my own decisions, but I can also ask for help if I need help. Mm -hmm. Yeah, sure. Right. And, and it, as a mom, I mean, I'm relieved. It's like having the supported decision making agreement in place. I know if something was to happen to my husband and me, then I know that she has a team of supporters that are there for her and they know her and they know what, you know, she, she's worked with them. So it's, um, you know, she can still be independent and live her best life. And that's really what this all comes mm. down to. That is very true. Very, very true. 
So are there any resources that you have found helpful that you would recommend to others who are looking to learn more about supportive decision-making? Grab your booklet. <laughs> yeah, here we go. <laughs> My guidebook again. So, well, first of all, the Massachusetts Supported Decision-Making website, because that's where we started our journey, right? For the, yeah. the, the lawyer that gave that um that breakout session was from Massachusetts. They had a pilot program running that was was going really great and they have a fabulous website. So, and they've actually worked really closely with the Supported Decision-Making Coalition to help us come up with our guidebook. Um, and then of course, yes, this it is. So um, there is a link to both the Massachusetts um, site and the, um, the guidebook that I believe Marnie is gonna put in the, uh, the chat box. And there's a PDF version of this too that I can um, I can share if anybody wants it. But it, I mean, it's a, it's great because it's it, it really goes through step by step what you need to do to, to create. It explains what a supported decision making agreement is. It goes step by step through. And I don't know if you can see this, but there's like four basic steps. So you choose individual decides who will be involved in supporting him or her. And of course the supporters must also agree to be involved. You discuss what you want to have them involved in, how they're going to support you, really what your goals are, because they need to have an idea of what your life goals are and what your plans are, right? Yeah. In, in for them to be able to support you. And then you make your plan. And, and again, there's a, an example um, agreement in here and then everybody signs it. And, um, as we were told, it, you can have it notarized, but as long as it's witnessed by two people, it's a legal document. So you have the choice to do either. Ours, we witnessed ours. We didn't have it notarized. Okay. But it's a great document. And at the end, one of the things I love about this is in the appendix at the back, there's support areas to consider. So it goes through finances and you can, you know, write down, I can do this. I need some support. What kind of support I need? So you can really, it's its a great planning tool to actually go through all the different areas, the finance area, healthcare, and I mean, several different um, levels, you know, making decisions about emergencies, making decisions about pregnancy, make, remembering to take medicine. I mean, there's, there's lots of different, um, legal matters, education, work. Um, so it really does cover a lot of different areas and life plan, choosing where I live, choosing with whom I live. There's, mm. you know, it, it covers lots of different, it just wow. gives you ideas for what to think about because there's so much more to this than just medical, financial. There's, right. you know, there, there's really a lot to think about. Yeah, it sounds like it. I, I didn't even think of like, but yeah, housing. I mean, that's right. like a huge thing. Yeah. Right. So there it puts you in control of your life. Right. right. Instead of somebody else. Right. Right. So Can when do you think question? somebody oh, ask, yes? We did have a question from Facebook. Yep. Um, as far as education goes, does the student have to have parents' signature? until they are 22 or 24, depending on to what age the parent or guardian insurance covers them? Hmm. I, I'm thinking that they're asking if they need a signature while they're still under their parents' insurance because some insurance covers till 22 or 24, 26. I think, yeah. actually, so my, my girls are both on my insurance, but they still sign all their own medical forms. Um, they get the bills, interestingly. <laughs> so, um, so no, because they're over 18, they have to sign the forms and I cannot sign for them anymore, so. Okay. Yeah. Denise, that if that question. answers your question, let us know. If, if you need clarification, please yeah. comment again and let us know. Absolutely. Yeah. So when do you think someone should begin the process? Um, 
17. At least 17, least right? 17. So yeah. I think when you're in school around 14, 15, the school starts talking about transition plans. Mm -hmm. And I think really that's when you start thinking about it. You might, you don't really need it in place until you turn 18. But I would definitely, it's something I would definitely start thinking about and talking to people about as, as soon as you're having those transition conversations, because it's, it's not something, I mean, it took us a while to get hours in place and yeah. to have Sammy, you know, decide what she wanted, especially with there not being one in Connecticut. So it took us maybe a year or two, I think, right, yeah. to get everything nailed down. So I, yeah, I would definitely, as soon as you start talking transition, um, would be a good time. That's right. You guys had to pretty much do it from scratch because we did. there wasn't mm -hmm. one here in the state. Right. So, wow. Okay. Um, we have one more question, Sammy. Do you, um, for your finances and income, do, do you do a lot of that on your own or do you rely on mom to help with, with that? I do a lot of it on my own. Yeah, she does. Yep, she gets her paycheck from work. Um, she puts it in the bank herself. Mm -hmm. She pays her bills. She's got a really active account on Amazon. <laughs> As we all do. Uh, right? <laughs> I taught her well. <laughs> so, yeah, she, I mean, if, if, if she needs help, I mean, if she gets a letter from the bank that says, you know, there's something going on or, right. you know, um, do you want this insurance policy? Then maybe that's when she would say, hey, I got this letter what what does it mean because it I mean sometimes I struggle to understand what they're trying to tell me right so it's very true um, so yeah but she's she earns her own money it goes into her own bank account she pays her bills yes right? yeah it's wonderful nice 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 hey, and Sammy I have to just promote your little your your business too Sammy is an amazing yeah. um jewelry uh, maker I, i'm mm -hmm. not even sure how to sammy but she makes sparkles. beautiful yes sammy sparkles she makes beautiful bracelets um and a small she plug donates. for our auction sammy <laughs> i was just also, leading there <laughs> she also donates some of her beautiful jewelry to <laughs> our just annual there. auction <laughs> yes she see. has she has a wonderful jewelry making business and she's okay. kind enough to donate some of her beautiful yes. creations mm -hmm. to our annual auction every year and they That's are, right. they're gorgeous. And they're you really can check them out. Yeah, there are Coming no soon. two the same. She <laughs> never makes two the same. Right. And she has a Facebook page, Sammy Sparkles, if you want to check out some of her designs. <laughs> I go. will actually drop that in the link. <laughs> yeah, definitely do that. Definitely do that. But they are beautiful. And since we mentioned the auction, yeah, we our auction begins the uh, Black Friday on Friday after Thanksgiving. <laughs> and, yeah. Since you brought it up. She brought it up. <laughs> We knew you'd get that in somehow. <laughs> hey, it's getting there. It's getting there. But no, I just, I, I want to thank you guys. Cause again, this is something that, um, you know, our youth are, are, you know, CT Casa group, and we want to just make sure we get it out to other families. Cause there are so many different, like you had said, Ruth, there's other, there's alternatives to guardianship and you've yep. got, you know, supported decision-making and you had mentioned the fact that Obviously, it, it would be nice for everybody to have that ability to have supported decision making, because that's ultimately what we all want our, our children or even like you said, it's a lifespan. Right. You know, but there right. are some individuals that unfortunately need more assistance. Yes. Um, Absolutely. But to know that supported decision making should be the first thing that people look at. And, and if it's right. possible, go down that road. Right. Um, because, again, everybody wants to be able to live a happy life a fulfill life and work and all that and be happy. Um, so, yeah, I mean, it's definitely, I'm sure Marnie plopped it in the, um, you know, if you need um, the PDF file, you can just email us. If you, yeah, if you need the PDF file, if you want to, um, to send us your email, if you want to drop your email in the comments, we'll be happy to send it out to you. Um, we did have one other question. I, uh, 
Emily always wanting the story behind the story. She would, <laughs> like <to know. laughs> she would like to know if you've ever navigated a difference when you've come to, which is a really great question, uh, of a difference when you've um, been making a decision together. Oh, so you mean, do, yeah, do do disagreements. We just, have yeah. we disagreed? Yeah. That's a really good question. It really is. It is. I, I think I wouldn't say disagreement because that's not really it's not like it's not like we're telling each other I'm not telling her what to do her, right. her supporters are not telling her what to do she's really just looking for input thoughts and yeah. guidance right. and yeah an input so I get a doctor's especially right so I mean and Samantha's had she's had a lot of medical interaction in the last few years so <laughs> but she's you know she's capable of looking things up herself and and you know but it's gathering all that information to make the best decision for for her right, right. yeah and, and really nobody that she has as a supporter is being pushy right right they're just giving thought because you, you chose the right people too yeah right. that, yeah and that's that's why it's really important you trust the people P picking the right people is huge yeah mm -hmm. Yeah, I can see that. Make good me. question, though. <laughs> it is a really good question. Good question, Emily. <laughs> Thank you, Emily. Yeah. So no other questions? Uh, no, that was it. That was it. That's it. Do you have any other final comments? Ruth, Sammy, do you think that we haven't covered that you really want people to know? I guess we just really want to get the word out, yeah. right? It's It's like... I think we know so many people in the disability community that just automatically got a guardianship situation because that's all they knew there was. And we, we, it's just really important to us to, for people to know there is an option if you want to look at it. And hopefully down the road, it will become, I mean, the, the coalition is doing a lot of work to we're, we're going to try and get the information into schools into transition um the transition office in schools we're trying to expose it to the legal system so that it is something that the people will have to look at before they go down the guardianship route so mm -hmm. it, it's like yeah okay it, it may not be appropriate but at least we looked at that and then we made the decision so right. I think that's probably the most important. I mean, Sammy w is so excited about this. She's she's been driving this herself, and she's she she's blown me away. To be quite honest, how um, she's just gone out there and found people and talked to people and got information, and um, you know, so yeah. If anybody wants to talk to us, we're here. <laughs> <laughs> And they will love to talk to you guys. I am sure. I am sure. Um, no, so just one more question, though, and I'm not sure. Um, but what if someone does have guardianship? What would you advise them to do if they wanted to go down the road and have that removed to be, you know, go into the agreement? I, I would. Yeah, definitely. I think they would need a lawyer. Mm -hmm. I would suggest, I mean, Disability Rights Connecticut has um, advocates that they could talk to that would maybe help them get in touch with the right lawyer. Right. Um, but or even talking to parents maybe. That's a good point. Talk to their parents first because their parent, I mean, I, I actually know a parent who said, I did the guardianship because that's all I knew, but I really don't like it. So good point. Talk to, talk to the parents first because the parents might, be open to looking at doing something different. Mm -hmm. and, and then if that doesn't work, you know, right. disability rights, a lawyer. Thank you. Is there another question, Marty? No. No? Oh, okay. It's just me, just me struggling with the link. Um, I'm, it was just me. All right. Well, with that, I guess we could say goodbye. We'd like to thank everybody for coming. And this will be I know, aired on our Facebook page for a while. So hopefully if you 
weren't here live, you'll be able to go back and, and watch it. But next Wednesday, the 29th, we will have another Facebook live event, which will be covering life course. So we'll have Sherry, our parent to parent program manager here speaking on behalf of what life course is and all the good stuff um, that it entails and how to put one together and so forth and so on. So that'll also be at seven o'clock, but it will be on a Wednesday, not a Thursday. So that might be, you know, we're usually good on Thursdays, but a little twist. Um, but anyway, but thank you very much. You're welcome. Again, Thanks for having you. us. Yeah, thank you guys. I'm really excited about it. So, and we'll let you know. I'm sure there'll be people that are going to want to be talking to you. Sounds great. Anyway, thank you, everybody. Thank Bye. you. Good Bye. Good night. Thank you.